Hey gun people, revolutionary series here on the uh, kind of, the next one I'm, I'm planning on doing is on tactics. Uh, man, it's so hot outside, I can't go outside, I can't go in the garage, it's smoking outside. So we're going to do this in the house. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about a little bit on government abuses and how our government has seized things and why I think the revolution has been coming or has been ongoing. I mean, some people are saying the whole world is in a revolution right now, not just our country. Because uh, freedom's government has learned over time how to overstep their bounds and seize freedoms because that gives them control. Remember, government can't grow and can't pass any laws without taking freedom. Every time government does something, you lose, as a people, control power and freedoms. It just, it can't happen. You can't have government continually growing and growing and growing and having your freedoms continually grow. It doesn't happen that way. It, it's, it, it's on a scale. And as government grows, freedoms go down. That's just the way it is. And since, I mean, since the beginning, and, and a lot of these notes are from uh, Judge Palatano uh, speech on, I, I forgot where he was talking. But I made notes when I was watching it a while back. And, I mean, it was just striking on how government slowly, minute little things, inch by inch, just like they've attacked guns for 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 years. There is so much gun control, and you got idiots now saying, we need more gun control. <laughs> Man, a government has been controlling guns from Jump Street. I mean, back in the 20s, they did they didn't want you to have automatic weapons because the gangsters were killing each other. I mean, it's just, it's been ongoing forever because a government does not like to arm people. I have a picture. Hell, I may even make it, uh, no, i, I got to use my revolution thing. But I have a picture that shows all the countries that have a Second Amendment. You know how many there are? <laughs> There's us. <laughs> okay? I don't know any other country in the entire world that allows its people to have guns. And the government doesn't allow us to have guns. Our founders wrote it in that the government would not infringe upon our right to own guns. Government doesn't give us that right. People think they do. Now, government can take it away because people won't stop them. But government doesn't give us the right to own a gun. So, no other country in the world has it. We're the last stand for the entire world. And you know what? We got idiots out there saying... Oh, yeah, if they took the guns, we'd be safe like the rest of the world. Look around. It just doesn't make logic. If you hate the Second Amendment so much, there's anywhere in the world you can go to. This is the only country that has it. If you really hate it that bad, then get the hell out. I mean, it ain't that hard. Shit, even a liberal should be able to figure that out. All right, so let me get to this up. How our government has abused and power grabbed over the years. And, um... Uh, now remember, in my first revolution series where the Stamp Act came out and I talked about that's what kind of kicked off where people said enough's enough. Remember the Stamp Act gave British soldiers the right to write their own warrant and to search your house to make sure you had complied with the Stamp Act and the, and the king got his tax on everything you owned and the British stamp was on everything. And that, that was the Stamp Act and that gave British soldiers, British soldiers could walk up your house and go, let me in. I've got a warrant. Here's a written warrant. I'm allowed to go in here and search. And anything I use, I can find. Man, bad times. That was the big cause that we went away. That we left. That we said enough was enough. Damn, by the time I get finished this, you're going to say, shit, we're worse off now than we were then. All right, so Thomas Jefferson was uh, the main writer of the Declaration of Independence. I mean, I, he, he, he kind of wrote it. Everyone else kind of like modified it or reviewed it. But he was the writer. Okay, and he, his main thing was defining the rights not from government. He did not write the Declaration of Independence saying, Government, great, wonderful government will give you these rights and they're going to keep everything else. That's not the way it is. Jefferson was more into, hey, these rights come from being born. They come from God, a higher power. We have the same rights of freedoms and choices to pursue our lives the way we want without Government getting in our business, telling us we can own a gun, telling us what we can talk about, telling us when they can come search and seize and target us. We have our own rights that the government does not give us. Okay, so 
Uh, and again, this, this, the, the, and how the how the founders kind of figured we need to put this is if we divide government into Congress and a court and the executive branch and the Senate and the House, if we div divide powers, that will put all these checks and balances that will stop government. That if they got together or one of them got too strong, they could seize all the power to take all the rights, and nobody would have nothing. So again, they were thinking ahead. Just like everybody should be, that government is inherently bad. It continues to grow. It will continue to seize power. It will always try and take freedoms in order to gain more power and control. And they usually do it through fear and taxes. But, the, but anyway, uh, so anyway, our rights supposedly came from God according to this. And government and the natural rights are not from government. Government doesn't give us anything. That was back when government was so oppressive and everything, people were like, look, we got to get away from government. We need to give people the free ability to think, to create, to make their own destiny. We don't need government picking and choosing winners like we have now, saying who will sell what to who, saying who has more rights, how many bathrooms you need to have, and you need to add a third one for transgender, and now you're going to need to add another one for dogs and a separate one for cats. We didn't want government telling us all this. So... Hamilton and Adams, they were both big government guys. Okay, they, they think the rights came from government. And they said government should allow these things and put restrictions. Okay? They, they were the modern day liberals back then. Anybody that wants a big government to me is a liberal. Liberalism is big government, communism, socialism. You have a group of haves that decide on who has and who has not. And they get to pick and choose. And you get this hierarchy, and it doesn't matter whether you call them kings, whether you call them leaders, whether you call them born by blood, or whether you call them president or congress. When you have a party that decides for everyone else, it's never good. Because they're always going to decide what helps and prevents them, or helps and encourages their power, or gives them more power, or keeps them in control, or benefits them, either through their pocketbook, etc. It just doesn't work. It's not reasonable. So, it's not reasonable for somebody that has reason. It's reasonable for idiots that don't understand and have no common sense, i.e., i, I got to say it, liberals. Okay, so uh, Jefferson and Madison won on this issue and said, no, the government does not give us these rights. These are ours. The purpose of the Constitution is to keep the government in check and divide those powers, and the rights do not come from government. They are natural born. Free speech does not say... The government gives you freedom of speech. That's not what it says. Okay, all of our all of our our, our amendments says what government should and can't do. It doesn't say what government does. So um, let's see. Um, the right to be left alone. That's where the Fourth Amendment came in. The Fourth Amendment is you know search and seizure, probable cause. You can't. You need to be, feel secure in your home quarters. If a government needs to come in and target you, they need to get a warrant. They need to ask a judge. And a judge was looked at back then as a third party, non-biased. Judges back then were not so much government flunkies. They were not liberal or Republican judges who pushed their political agenda. They were constitute, they were judges that reviewed things in the context of freedom and the Constitution. And they viewed it in the context of constricting or restricting government power, not letting it go overboard. When a cop brings something to a judge to review, the judge should be looking at it with a critical eye saying, are we overstepping? Is this reasonable? Does this fall within the constitutional rights? Are we violating anybody's rights? Are we doing the right thing? Or are we just being tyrannical government flunkies and going out there trampling on the citizenry? Well, guess what? We're there. Uh, so, uh, the Fourth Amendment is, again, no unregulated use of force. It was also about the government using force, uh, stopping people. And, and see, again, the government knew, our founders knew, that if government was the sole monopoly of using force, then you couldn't have freedom. Because when governments get power and force and they are allowed to use force to maintain that power, they become tyrannical and they take over the people. So the founders knew that we needed force from the people 
that we couldn't give government total control of being able, the only ones to use force to come in. So you couldn't have federal governments, police, local governments, just kicking in doors and doing what they want, writing their own warrants, doing all the shit that they're doing now with the approval of Congress and government, federal government, and the idiot people. So they didn't want that because they knew that's a bad thing when you give too much power. It's very reasonable to predict what's going to happen. I know that's called profiling. I know liberals don't like to profile. You shouldn't be able to predict things by looking at somebody just because it happens all the time, majority time, 99% of the time. You shouldn't be able to say it's reasonable to predict what's going to happen next. Well, that's that's racial profiling or profiling of religion or pro. We can't do that. That's to get rid of that common sense shit. You freaking freedom loving right wing gun guys always want to talk about this freedom and common sense shit. Get that out of your vocabulary. This is the new America, okay? Government can do what they want, how they want, when they want. You stupid sheep need to shut up and do it. That's the government we're in and people don't see it. So the Fourth Amendment was a real big thing about doing force, okay? Now, again, a lot of these things I'm talking about, the government has now found a way to go in the back door to where they're not the only ones with force. But if you notice, the rules have changed over the years. And now it's almost against the law for us to use force to defend ourselves, to defend our property, to defend ourselves against government. If we, the people, use force, we have become the lawbreakers, and the government will come down on us and use their force, which they think they are the only ones that should be able to use force, and you stupid people should not. You don't need guns, because we'll protect you. You don't need to use force to protect yourself, because we'll protect you. You don't need to stop somebody from breaking into your house, you call 911. You be a good victim and you depend on government because we are all knowing, all powerful. Bad, bad decisions, man. Uh, and of course, the tinfoil people will be saying, hey, you got a tinfoil hat on. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Adams was a big government guy and he beat up, he, he ended up beating Jefferson. So Adams and Jefferson, back then, the way that it worked is whoever came in second, with the vote, became vice president, which I kind of think may not be a bad idea because you have, you have that division of power. To me, anytime you slow down government, you make it harder for them to do shit, that's a good thing because when government does things too easy, man, they just it becomes a snowball rolling down a hill. Next thing you know, they're plowing over everything. You can't stop them, kind of like where we are now. So when Adams beat Jefferson, Adams was the president. Jefferson was vice president. Well, guess what? Vice President becomes the kick dog, the whip boy, doesn't matter, he's nobody. I beat him, but now he's my Vice President. So, uh, I, I kind of like that. So anyway, uh, when this happened, uh, Adams always thought there was too much freedom in the U.S. Now this is only eight years after we became a country. Eight years, the President was already attacking the Constitution saying, you crazy, pesky, right-wing, gun, conspiracy guy, Freedom lovers, patriots, just have too much freedom. We, as government, need to restrict that. I, I just can't believe it. Eight years later, Adam says we have too much. So, uh, let's see. He goes to Congress, and uh, he passes the Alien and Seditions Act. And that's where the federal government, <laughs> this is freaking crazy, can charge you... Now remember, the president passes Adams because Americans, you have too much freedoms. They made it a law that if you criticize the president, his cabinet, or his staff, and maybe Congress too, I can't remember. If you talk bad about any of those people and criticize them, you could be put in jail. There was a guy that did 10 years for calling Adams a, a, a something. I got it in here somewhere. He called him a couple names. And they kicked down his door. He was a senator. They kicked down his door and were going to convict him in jail. He ended up going to Canada for the rest of the war. But that, they used this seditious act because he talked bad about the president. Are you kidding me? And that, that might have been Lincoln and not Adams. But anyway, the Alien Sedition Act, the federal government could convict you now if you talk bad about him. Now, in this sedition act, they did not include talking bad about the vice president. Was that convenient? Was this, was this this left, right, was this this win, loser, was this opposition party that everybody says never existed till now, was it the same way back then? 
Because the president had the law passed, and he included Congress, and he included his cabinet, and he included himself. He did not include the vice president, Jefferson, who lost to him, but he was the vice president. So you could talk smack about the vice president all day long, print articles, you could slander the crap out of him. But if you talked about him, you could go to jail. Sound familiar? Sound like Obama? Obama don't want you talking about this and that. Obama's trying to throw people in jail for talking about, they, they call it uh, inciting uh, hatred, uh, hate speech. Uh, you know, we have to sign these fancy names because everything's about defining what words mean. You know, we'll, we'll call it terrorist, domestic terrorist. We'll call it domestic terrorist acts. We'll call it language that would encourage domestic terrorism in the United States. It's all about definition. And if you're paying attention, which most people don't because they're busy making a living to raise their kids, trying to get around taxes, pay their taxes, get their kids to school, always under the gun, always making less, always paying more, government taking more, they don't have time to worry about this stupid freedom government. Come on, Rick, move on. Nobody cares about this freedom government crap. I know. I'm trying. Doing what I can. Okay, so Jefferson uh, was still, uh, let's see. When Jefferson became president next, he said, don't send that shit to my desk. It's going to expire, and I ain't signing it. And it went away. Because Jefferson said, that's wrong. Even though I'm president now, even though I can stop people from criticizing me, I know it's wrong, and I'm going to do the right thing. Because we had good men back there that did the right thing for the right reason. Not for personal gain. And, and when, when, when and if this revolution happens here or anywhere else, people are always sacrificing and giving up a lot of personal gain because they choose to do the right thing. All right, so uh, let's see here. Assault on the federal liberties continued in the Civil War. Lincoln, oh my God. Everybody wants to love Lincoln. Are you kidding me? Uh, now, now back when this was passed, the anti-federalist guys attacked this. And of course, they were called the crazy white wing conspiracy freedom guys, patriot guys. But anyway, assault on the Civil liberties continued in the Civil War. Lincoln, what did Lincoln do? Lincoln killed 650,000 Americans. Well, Rick, that wasn't Lincoln. That was, uh, the, you know, the stupid South. Uh, you know, they, they didn't want it. It was slavery. It was a... Lincoln killed 650,000 Americans. He declared war on half. Mainly because the South wanted to leave the states. People were always saying, now, why don't states just leave the Union? Why don't we get out of the federal government and leave? Well, shit, last time that happened, 650,000 people died. You think that government's going to let states leave? and lose that money and control and power and authority? Not likely. The only way they're going to leave is if we make government lose 650000 Then they may leave. They may allow you to leave. All right, so uh, I'm not encouraging mine. Let me put this out here because you two will be out here reporting me to federal government. I'm not encouraging mine or decide a riot. I'm not trying to do anything that would tell you we should do this or have a revolution. However, I'm only predicting, in my opinion, if and when a revolution may come, this is how I think it will play out. This is what I think people will do. It's my opinion. So far, I'm allowed to have an opinion in the United States for now. Won't be long, but so far, right now, I kind of am, unless I'm on Facebook or YouTube, and then they can censor it and say, no, you don't have an opinion. All right, so uh, Lincoln was the worst guy. He, he was, uh, again, he, he, uh, he killed a lot of Americans. Uh, he locked up editors of newspapers, not in the South, in the North, on his side because they were condemning what he was doing. They were questioning his power, and he locked him up. Went to jail, I think 10 years or something. Uh, let's see. He had soldiers break down the door of the congressman because the congressman called him a monster and a tyrant. That's what it was. And he ended up going to Canada. Lincoln was the worst abuser of the Constitution. Lincoln locked up newspaper criticizing, uh, let's see. He suspended a uh, writ of habeas corpus. Hey, this court was basically, you have a right to go in front of a judge and state your case. The government can't lock me up and say, you're locked up and you're in jail without giving me the right to go in front of a judge and state my case and hear my side and make an impartial judge, if we have any impartial judge left, hear my side and the government side and say whether or not the government complied with the rules. And now the rules have all changed, so that's different now. But it used to be they had to comply with the rules, Fourth Amendment, search and seizure, probable cause, get a warrant, do the things that they had to do the right way in order to go after one of the citizens. Now, eh, that's that pesky constitution shit. We need to get rid of that anyway. All right, uh, let's see. First World War, Congress did an Espionage Act. And uh, it was a crime to discourage workers 
an ammunition plant to go to work. It's still law today. If you discourage any employee from going to work when they're working for the government on what the government deems a necessity, you commit a crime and can go to jail. Man, ain't freedom great? Woohoo! Red, white, and blue, baby! Unfreaking believable. Uh, uh, when, uh, let's see, World War II, FDR, locked up 10,000 uh, Italian-Americans and 110,000 Japanese-Americans. And the Supreme Court said, this is that check and balance, you know, the Supreme Court is supposed to leave the Constitution. Hey, Mr. President, is it okay about us lock up these people with no trial, no evidence, no search warrants, nothing? I didn't go before a judge. I'm just going to lock them up. Hey, U.S. Supreme Court, is that okay? U.S. Supreme Court said, no problem, Mr. President, you're okay. Are you kidding me? That's where government gets every time you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. Uh, no security. As long as, the as long as the president said they were a security threat, this is before the new words, domestic terrorists, uh, you know, wh whatever word now, uh, national security risk, public safety, those are the new words. Back then, the word was security threat. You didn't have to have no charges, no jury, nothing, no court. You just lock up. Sound familiar? Sound like, oh, shut up, my damn